everybody, we have another special case here that was surrendered to our Adoption Island program, a leopard gecko with mouth rot. So today we are going to teach you all about mouth rot, how to treat it, and we're going to follow the progress of this little guy until he gets a new home. This little dude was surrendered to us with stuck shed all over his feet and it looks like that's been an issue for him in the past because he's missing some of his toes. That sometimes happens when, or often happens, when they don't have high enough humidity or at least a humidity box for them to go in while they're shedding and the, the shed sticks to their toes and layers upon layers will cut off circulation of those toes and they eventually die and fall off. So this poor guy has gone through quite a bit already. We were able to soak his feet in lukewarm water for about 20 minutes minutes and then we took off that shed skin and it all came off what toes he still has left and he is not a happy little leopard gecko by the way thankfully he has a decently chunky tail and he doesn't see he's a maybe a teeny bit on the thinner side he's not terrible though he seems to be just a smaller leopard gecko in general he Wait, could be we've done this in the past he is a boy right he is a boy okay. here i i looked don't worry oh yeah he's definitely a boy definitely a boy he has both bulges and he has that chevron of pores he's not not very socialized. Well, he doesn't like you <laughs> flipping him upside down, I can tell you that. does not like being restrained. But what we are focused on more, or most, in this video is the fact that he has some mouth rot he going on. something out of his mouth. Yeah, that's part of his mouth rot. Yeah, so he guy. has, I know, yeah. So oh. let me show you, there you got some of it actually. Uh, let me show you what mouth rot looks like and then we'll talk about what causes it and then we'll go over how to treat mouth rot. You'll have to excuse all the crickets in the background. We are a reptile store, so we have yep. crickets here. Shh. Quiet crickets, we're filming. First, we're going to have to open his mouth so that you can see inside of his mouth and you can really see what we're talking about with this in terms of mouth rot. So I'm going to restrain him by putting his head in between two fingers. Got a good grip on him there. Then I can use my other fingers to restrain the back end of his body so he's nice and secure. So his lower jaw looks pretty good. Can you open up again? His lower jaw looks pretty good, pretty clean. We've got a nice pink color there. But his upper mouth, you can see we have some redness, we have a bit of swelling, and we have some yellow pus that you can kind of see almost flaking off, all of which are signs of mouth rot. Now, this can sometimes be severe enough to affect or spread to the teeth. So signs in addition to redness, swelling, and yellow pus would be black teeth when the mouth rot reaches their teeth. It can also cause swelling in their head overall, including somewhat bulgy looking eyes. And what causes mouth rot are a variety of things. Most often lizards will get mouth rot as a result of some sort of stress on their mouth, which then leaves an open exposed area for bacteria to fester in basically. And if left untreated, it can become quite serious, if not even fatal. Other things that can cause mouth rot would be poor husbandry in general, specifically a poor diet or uh, improper hygiene, such as like living in a dirty environment where bacteria is just growing and abundant overall, that can cause mouth rot. There's there's several different things that can cause it, but the symptoms are all pretty similar and it all does require vet care. So we are actually going to book this guy a vet appointment ASAP, but in the meantime, while we wait for his appointment, there are a couple of things that we can do, and you can do too if you have a lizard with mouth rot and you're waiting to go to the vet. First, we are going to make a makeshift saline solution using a cup of previously boiled water for sterility and let it cool down to a warm temperature. And then we're going to mix in one teaspoon of salt. Then we are going to use a syringe, and this is optional. You basically just need something that works well for spraying this out. So use what you have if you're in a pinch. I happen to be using a three mil syringe with a 16 gauge feeding needle that's actually built for hand feeding baby squirrels. So I can put a link to where to get these in the description below. These come in really handy for reptile use. Next we're going to extract some of this saline solution and use it to flush out the mouth of this leopard gecko. So I'm going to need a bin here for it to drain in of course. Let's see if I can get him to open his mouth for us again. You can also use your thumb and your forefinger to restrain them by the way. There we go. Okay, we're gonna flush it out. I know it's not fun. Let's clean out as much as we can there. There. Here we can see how much of his like pus came off just by doing that saline solution rinse. So that really did clear up his mouth quite a bit. Okay, now that that's been flushed out and cleaned as much as we can, we are going to use betadine to help prevent further infection of his mouth. 
Some people will use Q-tips to apply this, but we found that it actually works better to use a rolled up piece of paper towel. After you roll it up, just dip the end in pure betadine and then have the lizard chew on that soaked piece of paper towel to apply the betadine itself. A technique that I've personally found works well for getting leopard geckos to open their mouth is, especially if you're doing this one-handed, is I use my middle finger on one side of the mouth and the nail of my thumb on the other just to apply a little bit of pressure on each side right in between the lips and just a little bit. I'm just like barely touching him there and then he opens his mouth. It's really handy. And then, oh, I may have to do it again here. And then he closes. And then he can close right on that betadine soaked paper towel. Really mash it in there. Thank you, dude. That was perfect. Okay. Isn't it great when your patient actually works with you? Yeah, that was beautiful, right, actually. Right. I don't think you, I don't think humans yeah. generally do that well with the yeah. doctor. Yeah, that was great, buddy. You're better than most people at the doctor. Good job. All right. Well, that's what we're going to do regularly until his vet appointment, where we'll get further instructions and probably some antibiotics to help him heal up from this. Well, it has been 10 days since we got Gummy, which we've named him, and today is the day that the vet is able to see him. We weren't able to get an appointment right away because it wasn't like a life or death situation, and a lot of vets are just bombarded with new clients and new appointment requests right now because since COVID, literally millions of new animals have been added to people's homes. So if you're trying to book an appointment with a vet, be understanding if it takes a little while for them to get you in because they're swamped. So anyway, today's vet day, so let's see how he's doing. What we've been doing every day with this little dude is actually using that betadine on a paper towel and letting him gum it a little bit to clean his own mouth. So you'll be pretty uh, impressed, I think, with the results that we noticed today. Can you open your mouth? I know. We I, make you no, do... No! Yeah. I hate it! Yeah. I hate you! I'm sorry. It's for your own good. Here we go. We're gonna open your mouth. There we go. Look at that beautiful mouth. It's clearing up really nicely just by keeping it clean with betadine. Although I do still see a little bit of inflammation, a little bit of redness. And so we have the appointment scheduled. And although he's doing really well just on the betadine, it doesn't hurt to bring him to the vet just to see if they have any other recommendations as far as like antibiotics go. So let's bring him to the vet. Well, I'm at the vet here and he just sneezed and I see a bubble out of his nose. Do you have an RI too that I didn't notice before? Well, it's a good thing you're in the right spot right now. We'll have you checked out for that too. All right, well, I'm Dr. Plants and I'm gonna go over how to give uh, an injection to a leopard gecko here. We've got gummy and um, we're gonna treat him with some ceftazidime for some little bit of lingering mouth rot, um, as well as uh, we have a little bit of concern now for a respiratory infection. So um, we've got our needle ready and we're just gonna kind of hold him real gentle. And as soon as we get right in the skin there, you can feel it poke through and you just squeeze it all in. There you go. Easy peasy. Good boy. So will this, these injections be every, eight, I can't remember the uh, frequency. Every 72 hours or every third day. Okay. Um, with reptiles, since his metabolism is slower, we usually treat for, I do seven injections, so for about 21 days. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Good little guy. You did great. And we're back from the vet. The moral of today's video or story is if you have a reptile with mouth rot, the best thing you can do is schedule an appointment with a reptile specialty veterinarian so that you can get the right antibiotics to help him out. Betadine might do a great job cleaning things up and promoting a healthy healing of gum tissue, but you never really know if there's gonna be a secondary infection or something, so it's very important to get them on antibiotics. And in today's case, not that they normally go hand in hand, we were able to find out that he has a little bit of a respiratory infection and so the antibiotics will help treat that too. So we'll be continuing his antibiotic shots every three days for 21 days as the vet recommended and we will be doing the betadine soaks or cleaning of his gums every day for the 21 days and we'll check back when he's starting to look better. All right, we are done with medications for Gummy. So let's take a look at how he's doing. We've had him for just over a month now and he looks so much better. You can't really tell on the outside, but take a look at his, first off, his nostril. It's not bubbling anymore. He's not licking it all the time, which would indicate that it's bothering him. So his nose is not bothering him anymore by the looks of it. And now, since we're really focusing on mouth rot, let's take a look inside of his mouth. Again, we're going to touch one side of his lips, put the, our nail, just a teeny bit of pressure, actually not even pressure, I'm just touching where his lips meet. 
look at that nice clean mouth and those beautiful gums. The irritation and discoloration inflammation has pretty much all gone away. I can't really see any leftovers, so he is cleared to go health-wise. He's a little bit on the thinner side, but I don't think that's anything to be too concerned about. I'm sure it's just because he didn't want to eat a whole lot this last month because he was getting injections every three days. So he's still a good enough weight that we can comfortably adopt him out now, and he will find his forever home. I wish I had started filming to show you how bad the stuck shed was, but we got it off, which is the important thing, and all that's left is just uh, some missing toe tips there. He has all of his toes on his other feet, so it was really just that front right foot that was affected by the stuck shed. But yeah, this little dude is quite the trooper, and he has been a joy to have around, even though he has maybe a little bit of a sassy attitude, but really not that bad, and I don't blame him for us. A little us, bit uh, of a tude. A little bit of a tude, but honestly, we were poking him with needles every once in a while, so I don't blame him at all. He doesn't look very happy right there either. Yeah, he, he thinks he's getting an injection, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but those are all done, so buddy, you don't have any meds anymore. Also, since he doesn't have the swelling of his gum tissue, uh, he doesn't look like a bulldog anymore, the way he holds his mouth. He holds it normally again. Another thing that we were doing with him, in addition to his ceftazidime injections, was that we were continuing the betadine mouth treatments every single day where basically we just had him chew on a saturated piece of paper towel that was dipped in some fresh betadine and that kept his gums clean and promoted healthy tissue growth or promoted the healing process of his mouth rot. So today we learned what causes mouth rot in lizards, how to treat mouth rot, which is essentially bringing them to a reptile specialty veterinarian, and how to prevent mouth rot from even occurring in the future. So thank you everybody for watching today's video and huge thanks to our Patreon backers whose contributions paid for the medical bills for Gummy. Aw, you falling asleep? Oh, he's taking a little nap. You're just not having this video, are the, you? The closing is taking too long, apparently. He's I... letting you know. <laughs> you said, you're that bored, huh? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody, yet again, and I guess I'll go set him up in Adoption Island. Here he is, all set up. Gummy! Oh, you're way in the back. Hi! Oh, he's fast asleep. Hey, buddy. Yep, so Gummy is all set up in Adoption Island, and oh my goodness. Hi, Guts. Well, hello. Are you gonna head bob at the leopard gecko? Or are you gonna wave at the leopard gecko? And head bob. A little bit of everything. Well, since he's showing off, Guts is a bearded dragon that isn't yet available because he is underweight, but he will be available soon. Yeah, won't ya? Once you're of a good weight. All right, anyway, this video is about Gummy, not Guts. But I just wanted to say thank you yet again to Vision for sponsoring Adoption Island because if you can believe it, since we opened our shop earlier this year, we have been able to take in and adopt out over 150 reptiles and amphibians. That's just nuts. I looked at the numbers and I can't believe we've been able to find homes for so many surrendered reptiles. So that's pretty cool. I thought I'd share it with you guys. And none of this would be possible if it weren't for Vision Cages. So thank you again for sending us these cages because we are able to help a lot of reptiles in need, including Gummy here today. Thanks again, everybody, and we'll see you next time.